This video is aimed at understanding and using LISA, a rather extensive data set of companies in the Netherlands. Or rather, LISA is the employment register of the Netherlands. In other words, it is a collection of data on how many people are working in which companies. What sets this data set apart from other similar registrations is that it works with the actual place of business and not just the corporate headquarters. You can use this data set in order to get really good insights in a very important aspect of life, which is work. You can find how many people work near a certain place, but also in which industries they work. An example of this is given on the LISA website itself. Here you can see how employees in the insurance industry are distributed over the country. In a few moments, I'll show you around the data, but first some general remarks about this data set. You can imagine that this data is hard to come by. It takes a lot of work to get all the information for and from all the companies. Typically this is largely done by local and regional governments, but the extra work that goes in the making of this data set is not financed by the government, meaning that in order to maintain a viable business model, the data is not open data. For educational purposes, we received a summarized data set. That is the main reason why the description of the fields is only largely but not completely covered by the description in the manual. Please also have a look at the manual. It's in Dutch, but you're used to that by now. And remember that some of the things you'll see there are not 100% the same as in the data set itself. So let's have a look at the data itself now. One of the things you might notice is that if you look at the data set itself and you're looking at the LISA data here, is that it looks like a, well, it's a very messy directory here with all kinds of data sets and not even audio or video files here. Um, that's just the extension. So what we have here is a file geodatabase that is a proprietary S3 format. Can we use this in QGS? Yes, we can. Um, it is pretty simple nowadays uh, because you can just drag and drop this one into your QGIS project. However, that is not the way we're going to do this now because I really want to show you how this works. So if you go to the browser uh, and you have a look at the browser panel and here you can see I looked up the same directory and here you see that there is the uh, file geodatabase here and if you open that one up you can see that there is just one data set included in this data um, geodatabase and that is the LISA um, Bedrijvenregister. So we can just drag this to the canvas and here you see that we've got all the companies in the Netherlands now showing up. This is a bit too much perhaps. We're only interested in a smaller number of, uh, of companies. So how many companies are there in the Netherlands? Let's have a look at the feature count. Uh, we see there are uh, 1.6 million uh, companies in the Netherlands at, uh, at this point of registration, 2018. Might be a bit too much to work with so many data points. So we're going to filter a bit here. Now you've already learned how to make a spatial filter. I'd like to also have a look at the, uh, the filter for the data set itself. Uh, so let's have a look, let's filter. And here you see all the fields in this data set and I'll come back to that later. But here, for example, you have the number of people working in the company full-time and part-time. So let's think, for example, that we only are interested in larger companies, for example, over hundred people working there. Uh, so what we can do now is that we could add these two and let's say um, we put the full-time personnel and the part-time personnel together and that should be over 100. Uh, so now we have a filter set that shows us the companies that have more than 100 employees. It is now currently filtering and the beauty of this filter is that you're actually just looking at those companies now that comply with this filter. So you have 11,283 companies now, and those are the companies in the Netherlands that have over 100 person working there. 
So let's zoom into Delft and have a look at, uh, at some of the companies here. Might be interesting to have a little background map underneath that. It's always good. And you can see there's a few companies here in the university area. So let's have a look if, uh, for example, this one uh, is part of the university. Identify both of them. And here we see there is a company here at Juliana Lan 134, uh, which is indeed uh, higher education. Uh, there are 303 people working there full time, 70 part time. There's also another organization at the same location that employs 250 persons and 23 part-timers also in higher education. So that is the registration. Now there's a few other things here that might be interesting to have a look at. And one of them is, for example, the SBI. You see here, there's an SBI 08 code and it's got this code 8542. Now the SBI codes are standardized codes for everything that have to do with the um, field of work that a certain company is working in. Uh, so we have here the standard industrial classifications um, and it has some relation to international uh, classifications as well. There's a PDF version of this um, in English, which includes all the different um, classifications that we have in the Netherlands and I think it was 8542 uh, 8542 that is tertiary education and that is the classification that the university uh, applies within so using this we can create new insights using this data One of the things we could do is, uh, for example, we always start with visualizing. So uh, we can use a layer styling uh, panel here again. And we could, for example, uh, do this on this code, but also on the uh, written SPI. Um, and the written one means that you can actually read what's going on there. So you see these are the different organization types that we have here. Another thing is, now it's just symbols, it's circles with a coloring. But we could also have a look, of course, at the size of this symbol. So we can use the size of this marker and make that into a, uh, a variable. We can use an assistant here for the size, uh, saying, for example, we want to use the number of people working here, the full times, full timers, for example. We could also calculate both of them, but in this instance we're just looking at the full-time people working here we have uh, values there from up to 10,000 I'd say yep there we go and, uh, and we can size the symbols using this number we could also put this a little back so that it has slightly more impact uh, to 5,000 and of course 100 is our minimum value Let's have a look how that works out. Now we have two things here. We have the color scheme for the different uh, types. And of course, there's too many types here to make a very good distinction between the companies. Uh, and the other thing is that we have the size for every organization by the size of the symbol. So what kind of organizations are here? Which one is this one? This looks like the hospital. And indeed, it is a uh, it is the hospital, and in the hospital, there is nearly two thousand people working full time. So yes, that is a large organization. It's here in Rijswijk, there's also, I think this is the patent office. Yep, it is, European patent office. Uh, it's got twenty seven hundred people working there. Um, those are the larger companies. Now, in using this data and this symbolization. You could also make a map very similar to what the uh, Lisa Foundation itself did on their webpage with the uh, insurance companies. However, as urban researchers, we're 
not really interested in nice looking maps. They're nice looking, by the way, but we're not really interested in them. We're interested in gaining insight, for example, in how a certain industry is embedded in a certain area. Or we want to know if and where certain industries are clustering together. We can use the SBI classification to determine logical combinations and discover using the LISA data if those types of companies are indeed clustering. We can also combine the LISA data with other data sets and find if there is, for example, a dependency in certain industries for major road, rail or water connections. Having this fine-grained data available just opens a lot more possibilities for your research. Filter whatever you need, combine and discover. And I wish you a lot of interesting finds. Good luck.